Patrick, ready? All right, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to LA2M. My name is Jim Musial. Um, I'm subbing today for Derek Maribon, who is uh, is on a client engagement today. So he asked me to, to step in. So I wanted to say hello to everybody. Start off first, do we have any first time visitors here to LA2M? Yeah, a couple of you guys, great. Thank you so much for being here. We're glad you're here today. We hope you come back. Um, we're here every Wednesday at, at high noon, and we have some phenomenal speakers, um, as you'll see today. Um, so we hope you come back and, and continue to visit with us. So I've got my little cheat sheet here so I don't miss anything. So I'll tell you a little bit about LA2M. Um, we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, because of that, we do have some expenses. Um, so we do pass the hat. Up here with me is, uh, is Stacy Collick from Dollarville Copy, and she is our treasurer. So we're gonna pass the hat around. We asked for a suggested donation of five bucks. Um, you don't have to put something in, but it certainly helps to pray our costs. We do have some hard costs, uh, employee costs and whatnot. So we are, uh, we are really appreciative of anything you put in there. That would be great. Um, also, with that, we, uh, we do offer uh, sponsor opportunities. Uh, for LA2M each month. Uh, we have a newsletter that goes out to about 1,700 people, and uh, I think it's a, it's a real good message. This month's sponsor is, uh, is 3.7 Designs right here in Ann Arbor. Uh, they're a web design company. Ross is here in the back. So if you'd like to, uh, first of all, thank you to 3.7 Designs for sponsoring February. And, and we appreciate that. I asked Ross if he wanted to say some words. He doesn't. So if you want to hear about 3.7 Designs, please see Ross right after, after the presentation. And he'll be happy to tell you all about it. So thank you, Ross. Um, also, we have a t-shirt for, uh, for our speaker. We give one each week. Um, we are very fortunate. This your t-shirts are provided by Bank of Ann Arbor. So we appreciate that. They're awesome shirts. So Stacy is going to present this to our, to our speaker today. Oh, yeah, let me do it again. Let me make sure Take you do it. Again. I just want to get to it. So again, so we, we, you've got a really great presentation today. And uh, for you first timers, most of you guys know how this runs today, but for the first timers, um, we have a speaker here today who's going to talk for about 30 minutes. Uh, and then we'll have some time at the end for questions, and, uh, and I think it's going to be a really great topic today. Um, so we hope you're here every week. It's a great turnout today. This is what we, we see every week. Um, but if you're not able to make it here, we also stream it live on the, on the web. And Roger Rail's over there, and we have people hopefully all over the country and all over the world watching right now. Uh, so if you're not able to make it on any given Wednesday, jump on la 2 ms website, and you can see the live stream. So it's my, my privilege and my pleasure to introduce our speaker today. Uh, Bilal Saeed is from PacMode uh, Media and Marketing, and he's going to talk today uh, about the sponsorship shift of taking your traditional advertising dollars and taking them digital. So I think that's a lot of things that we all deal with on a daily basis right now, that there's a huge paradigm shift, and I think it's going to be really a, a great topic. I saw a little bit of the slides as he was going through them, just kind of checking things, and it looks like it's going to be really, inter uh, really interesting. So. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Bilal and let's give him a round of applause. All right, cool. So sponsorship, what an exciting Wednesday. It's like, let's go out to LA2M and hear this dude talk about sponsorship. Like that is the worst topic of all time. But that's my specialty, so I'm glad you guys are here today to share that with me. Um, Sponsorship to me is, is something that uh, kind of has a negative connotation to it sometimes because uh, you're always trying to sell something, solicit money, and things like that. But specifically, we're going to talk about sponsorship um, in sports and entertainment marketing because that's my specialty. Um, and uh, we're going to talk specifically about the shift from uh, traditional dollars to digital dollars. So um, the thing about the sports industry is that we're always a little bit behind in terms of keeping up with technology. So right now, you know, we've seen that shift happen in traditional mar or in, in marketing as a whole, um, shift from traditional avenues to digital. I mean, that's been happening for the last few years. Um, we're, we're, we're more comfortable with social media than we were ever before. Um, but in sports, it's, it's always a little bit behind. 
Um, and, and I think a lot of that is because they're focused on winning and, and, and producing winning uh, organizations. So because uh, sports is a little late to adapt to the game a little bit, um, right now what we're seeing is just a shift from traditional dollars to digital dollars. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, before we get into um, that, I just want to tell you a little bit more about myself. So I'm an EMU graduate, uh, class of 2008. I started Pack Mode uh, my last semester in college, and I had the genius idea of starting a print media company. I'm like, Ann Arbor News is gonna shut down, so I'm gonna give it a go. That makes no sense at all, but that's why I'm not doing print media anymore. So um, we were working in the sports marketing space, so we naturally had an opportunity to shift into that space, and we realized that's where the opportunity was. And when I say we, I started the company with a uh, partner, Tim Atkins, and um, we called ourselves the Pro Founders. We still do. And the Pro Founder mentality, I want to talk about that real quick because it speaks a lot to how we run our company and it ties back into why we put an emphasis on digital marketing into sponsorships. So traditionally sponsorships, you sell it, you hang a sign, that's it. We're marketers. We love marketing. So although I am a sales uh, rep and that's my primary role for the company is selling our, our sponsorships, um, I'm really focused on the activation of the sponsorships. And I'm gonna explain what activation is here in just a second. But um, currently, so just so you guys get a little bit of a paint a picture of the landscape of what we're working on here at Pack Mode, uh, my current projects include uh, partnerships with EMU, UDM, o uh, Oakland University Athletics, uh, Concordia, the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl, and Detroit City Football Club, which is a minor league soccer team. And we're gonna be spending our first season with them this summer. Pretty excited about that. On top of that, we also have a few music festivals that we partner with, um, two in Ohio, one which happens to be the largest, the nation's largest college music festival um, called Number Fest. This thing is insane. So um, for an event that's been around 12 years, um, we're really taking uh, sponsorship to the next level this year. They've really never had a significant revenue impact and almost everything that we're putting together for them is focused and revolved around a digital emphasis rather than hanging a sign or putting a table up and having the clients pass out flyers and stuff. We're really trying to tap into those digital channels such as social media and what we can do that's going to have a long lasting impression past the event. Um, so I told you I'd give you a little bit of background on the terms that I'm going to use. So um, because sponsorship is like a little bit of a niche market, I just wanted to make sure that you guys are keeping up with me and, and you're not like, what is this guy talking about? So um, activation, that's really just the execution of the sponsorship. So let's say I go out and sell a sponsorship um, to McDonald's and part of it includes uh, doing a 25-yard field goal during a timeout. Putting on that timeout promotion is the activation of that sponsorship. Um, so let's say I'm doing that sponsorship at uh, Oakland Athletics uh, during a basketball game. Um, that is the property. Oakland is the property. UDM is the property. EMU is the property. Breakaway Music Festival is the property. So each one of these entities we treat as a property. And each one of them has a bundle of media associated with it. Whether it's their website, their social media, um, and even when you look at the sports programs, you're talking about TV, radio, print. And those, the ownership of that media is the media rights. So there's two ways that we partner with universities, or we work with universities and our different properties. It's either uh, on, on a partnership basis of media rights uh, or the ownership. And we go in and buy the media rights outright and then we'll do a revenue share. So just to give you a little background, that's how that works. <clears throat> so the one thing that I, I always talk about is like, sponsorships is just like any other type of marketing. Um, in the sense that we have the same goal as a traditional media buy would be, or a, an ad in a newspaper or a radio would be. We are literally looking to deliver an ROI for our clients all the time. The first thing we do is when we meet with our clients, we sit down with them and we ask them, you know, what are your goals, what are your needs, what are your wants, what are you looking to do? Some of them are looking for branding exposure, some of them are looking for um, opportunities for new customers, uh, but majority of them at the end of the day, they want their bottom line bigger. So we really look at avenues of ways that we can drive revenue for them, not strictly from the standpoint of like brand association or affinity marketing, which is traditionally done what in the sponsorship space in, in collegiate athletics, but we're really looking to tap into things such as, okay, if the um, athletic department at, at a specific university is going to put out uh, a weekly video on get to know the team, that we're going to want that video sponsored by um, a, a local um, organization, let's say LaFontaine, because they've done something like that with us before. 
But what we'll do, rather than just throw LaFontaine's logo up there, is we're going to have two people from LaFontaine actually host the actual uh, web clip, the video. So that way it's fully integrated, and you don't even know that you're being marketed to properly, and it, it really drives home the idea of making the sponsorship last past the initial uh, activation. So there's two parts to a sponsorship, uh, in, in my opinion. There's the actual bulk media buy, and then there's the marketing partnership. So when you look at the media buy, um, if you're ex company and you come to Packwood and say, we want to buy a sponsorship, we're interested in partnering with you, you're going to actually get discounted media. So when we broadcast our games on TV, radio, or whatever it is, we're buying that media from the company outright, whether it's WTKA or WADL in Detroit. We own that uh, inventory. So actually, it's a sunk cost for the athletic department in a sense because they have to broadcast their games anyways. So a lot of times you can buy media at a discounted rate. So if you went to the station and say, hey, I want to place an ad, you might pay 100 bucks. We're able to charge 50 bucks because all we're trying to do is recoup cost and build that into an overall package of a, of a bigger sponsorship. So you have that media buy component to it. But really where the digital emphasis comes into play is the marketing partnership, in my opinion. The partnership is things that go beyond just the, the actual advertising. So, um, unfortunately we're having some issues with uh, video today, but um, there's, there's a number of videos out there that show exactly how that uh, marketing partnership works. So, one of the videos um, that, that I love to refer to is a partnership between the Air Force and the Sacramento Kings. Um, Air Force, obviously a big sponsor of Sacramento Kings. They have their si score, scores table signage, they've got the radio ads, print ads in the game program, but they wanted something that was going to go beyond the walls of the stadium. They, they wanted something that was going to go home with people, that people were going to tweet about, that people were going to be like, wow, that was amazing. So it's a real simple activation. They literally drop down from the, the rafters of the, uh, the stadium on a rope. They propelled down with the game ball, and this place went nuts. I mean, it was absolutely insane. But what it did for their impressions uh, in terms of views, and, and, and you think of uh, viewership and ROI, it, it, it was almost double what they got out of their traditional media buy. But they actually, as part of the sponsorship, it was one of the lowest values of it. So one of the things that we'll talk about, because I know I, on Twitter and Facebook before today, I got some questions coming in to me about how can we uh, really leverage sponsorships for our charitable event and things like that. So we're going to talk about digital and traditional a little bit, but I'm also going to touch about touch on how we can help you guys drive new revenue for your events. So the thing that we do at, at, at Pack Mode that, that kind of differs from everyone, um, it, it, it really goes into that unique activation. And I think the best example is, is probably the first time we at Pack Mode did something big in the digital space in, in regards to sponsorship. It was about three years ago. Um, we sat down with EMU Football and their former coach, Ron English, good buddy of mine, awesome guy, um, really respect him, work really closely with him, and he came to Tim and I and he said, guys, we need a way to really build buzz this year, and we heard you got, you were the ones that we needed to talk to, so we had a great conversation. I mean, we talked for almost two hours to really identify all of the different aspects that coach was, uh, had planned for uh, the upcoming season. One of the things we learned was they had this awesome new partnership with Adidas, and that we were going to have 21 uniform combinations at a Mac school at EMU. So it's pretty rare for a Mac school to have 21 uniform combinations. And Tim and I thought that uh, that was the best area we could tap into for a number of reasons. But uh, what we wanted to do was leverage that and create more value for Adidas. So Adidas was partnering with the, with the university, and the university was all about this deal, but we needed to build some opportunity for Adidas to gain additional exposure so that Eastern could, could afford it. We all know, um, you know, at the, on the educational level, budgets are being slashed for the last few years. So just to compete in the marketplace um, as a mid-major school in the athletic department, you kind of have to somehow rely on these sponsorships to drive extra value for your vendors uh, just to make it make sense sometimes. So what we did was we put together a fan vote competition and we put together five out of the 21 different uniform combinations, we put five up online and we let our fans vote which, which uniform the team was going to wear against Toledo and we had the entire thing sponsored by Adidas. 
So there's a number of different things you can do. You can have the page hosted on their Facebook page so that they get the likes. Um, you can drive it to their website. You can create a hashtag, uh, which is a little bit more difficult. But at the end of the day, it really goes back to what are the client's needs, what are the client's goals, and Adidas was really looking to just get in the space of, of doing something different in college athletics. So um, we actually test launched this at um, Eastern, and Adidas loved the idea so much that they ended up taking it to Bowling Green the next year and doing the exact same thing with it. But what you get out of it, again, you talk about um, what techno the beauty of technology in, in marketing as, as a whole is our ability to measure. You know, we, we now think in terms of impression, CPM, CPC, and how many people, what's our reach, what's our ROI? So for traditionally in sponsorship, in sports and entertainment, it's really, really difficult to, to measure anything. So um, you've seen a little bit of, um, of conflict with the people, with the buyers for these traditional sponsorships. They're saying, well, look at what I'm getting out of this, and you guys can't show me any of the data. So now we're able to implement those uh, digital marketing strategies into a sponsorship that actually is getting you more reach than, than the actual media buyer the contract's getting. Um, one of the cool things we did with the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl, um, with bowl games you have uh, affiliations with two conferences. The Pizza Bowl has an affiliation with the Mid-American Conference and the Big Ten. So our, our, our issue was we don't know what school is going to go to the game, what two schools are going to be invited to the game until about three weeks before the game. So how do we market to our, the fans if we don't know who the fans are? So what we said was, let's try and tap into all of the teams from both conferences. Obviously, we know um, there's certain schools in the Big Ten that probably aren't just going to come to the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl, such as U of M. Um, but you know, with that being said, you still can target and focus in on schools like Minnesota and Northwestern that might be, end up at the Pizza Bowl. And, and the entire Mid-American Conference you can target. So we did a weekly pick em poll, and we just asked our fans to pick the winners of the, of the matches coming up that week. And what we were able to do was uh, generate the data and engage them um, in a way that we hadn't done before. So 13 weeks before the, the announcement of the game, we already have uh, 100 to 150 entries per week in the first month. Then they start building because you start realizing, okay, this school is out of it, and, and now the fans are starting to come full force for that. Um, we just did a, a simple giveaway associated with it. We did a weekly t-shirt giveaway and a grand prize uh, VIP experience. And what we were able to do was leverage the data that we were able to get from there and drive that on the back end for more revenue and do some new retail sales that we had never tapped into before. So when you look at it in the big picture uh, of things, Everything revenue-wise that we were able to bring to the table for the Pizza Bowl and for a lot of our clients revolves around digital marketing. So um, that shift is completely happening. Um, I put this uh, ROI-driven sponsorship, I put an example down of Trinity Transportation. I work closely with them. Uh, they are now the transportation for all the properties that we work with. So when we work with companies, we don't just look to hang a sign, like I said. We're not just looking to help them um, gain that exposure, we're actually almost becoming extended sales reps of theirs. And a lot of the ways that we do that is by tapping into opportunities, again, on the back end in the digital space. So um, when you drive that ROI for your client through a sponsorship, it, it, the renewal process is much easier. They come to the table usually with a bit bigger budget the next year. One of the rules we live by at Pack Mode is don't reinvent it, uh, <laughs> remix it. So um, what I mean by that is, I kind of talked about this before, sports is behind. Sports is always a few steps behind in terms of social media, technology, um, and, and just that whole digital aspect. A lot of time because of resources, but mainly, again, because they're focused on building winning programs um, at the collegiate level, the student athlete experience. So um, what we do is we take some of the, your guys' best ideas, the marketers that, are in, in, that we work with and, and that we pay close attention to, um, like I said, I'm a marketer at heart, so I'm always reading about different strategies um, and, and, and cool things that are going on outside of sports, outside of entertainment, outside of sponsorship. And I'll take those different ideas, kind of put a twist on them, remix it, like you say, and, and, and put a digital twist to it and throw that in the mix. Um, I think the best example that we could talk about of, of, of a mixture and that shift that we're talking about 
comes from an example from this past Super Bowl. So, uh, did anyone catch the uh, eSurance 30 giveaway? Really? Wow. Okay, so uh, everybody knows most expensive ad spots in the world are TV spot with the Super Bowl. Uh, eSurance had a strategic approach and said, let's see how much a, the first commercial after the Super Bowl's over costs. So they realized it was a break in price of $1.5 million. What they did was, they said, let's take that $1.5 million and offer it to a fan, a lucky fan. So they created a hashtag, eSurance30, to drive digital use. Uh, and to, all you had to do was post to Twitter, eSurance30, um, I want to win type thing. And the commercial aired, and Twitter went crazy. Uh, the overall numbers that have come in are over 2 billion impressions. So the viewership for the, just to put it in perspective, the viewership for the Super Bowl this year was the highest rated TV uh, event in, in the history of anything in TV. 111.5 million viewers. Two billion? Like, that's what eSurance did by using a mix of traditional and digital and honestly just being creative. So now when we talk about that don't reinvent it, remix it, I, I it's just a matter of time before we see companies that are going to try and do what eSurance did. But I think what you have to remember is, is that when it's this successful, you've got to try and do something that's going to bring an edge to it in a different perspective. But that campaign was strictly digital. Obviously the traditional buy was what sparked it and what got it going. But those two billion impressions, you can't get those numbers in traditional platforms. And that's the beauty of uh, tying them together. So right now you'll see that mixture, right? You've got the traditional, the TV commercial that's driving the, the back end social media. But what you're seeing is that shift right now. So I, I think when we'll get into this a little bit later, um, I think that shift is gonna continue. And I think we're gonna see a bigger and bigger emphasis put on digital and it's a certain, I mean, I think we're just a few months, years away from seeing 100% uh, digital buys and saying, we don't want that sign, we don't want the game program ad, we don't need an ad on your website, we want that marketing partnership that we can use to drive the back-end digital uh, engagement piece for our fans. <coughs> so, after uh, I, I decided to add this slide in, um, after a few comments and tweets I got, um, saying how can we use this for our events and, and um, and, and you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a buyer, you know, what are things I should keep an eye out for? So I think definitely uh, with sponsorship, the biggest thing is if you're gonna buy a sponsorship, if you're a company that's looking to sponsor an event like 3.7 Designs, obviously this is more of a, a support networking sponsorship, but you can look at any sponsorship and say, what am I getting out of it? Um, you need to have clear goals up front, measurable and attainable. Um, I always tell people um, that we're working with, don't look at, uh, you know, I have to invest five, ten thousand dollars Start small. Do one really solid activation, see how that goes, and then look to invest more. Work out some kinks, and then, and then uh, put both feet in. Um, again, focusing on the activation is key. So, um, Chelsea, Chelsea, where are you at? Chelsea's right here. Chelsea is our general manager at Eastern, and she actually does all of our um, activation for us. So, one of the things that she actually did was uh, run the activation for the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl, and we had a whole team of 12 to 15 people that were just in the stands, uh, tossing be Beanie Babies out into the crowd, doing the big Michigan Lottery uh, jumbo scratch-offs, uh, doing road prizes and things like that. And those pictures are, are what lasted the longest in terms of the reach and because they went big on social media. The biggest one we saw was the Quicken Loans um, uh, home giveaway. Quicken Loans actually partnered uh, with the game this year to give away two homes and we actually broke our record. Last year we had uh, 2.4 million impressions total for the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl. One tweet with an image uh, of a home, being, a home being given away, it was a picture of the family reacting to them finding out. So they're just like, oh, you know, like, I just got a house. It was like one of those moments that you just we got the image, and we had over three million impressions within 24 hours. So when you talk about the digital reach, like I said, don't reinvent it. It's not like, oh, what, what, what's super creative we can come up with? Images tell stories. Um, just putting it online and, and having that 
that story behind it can make it go so much further. So we did three million in about 24 hours, and the overall impression rate was over seven million at the end of the day. It was phenomenal. Um, locally, you, if you ask yourself, what are there, are there companies I can work with, things I can do? Um, let's say you have an event and you want to sell sponsorship. Um, what, what are ways you can do that? I would suggest reaching out. One of my favorite companies to work with locally is Snapfuse. They're a photo booth DJ service that really works on full branding, integration, and driving the digital on the back end. So traditionally, you go in a photo booth, take your picture, got the logo at the bottom, you're like, woo, awesome. What Snapfuse is able to do is, is uh, drive that on the back end and have a social time. You can post straight to Facebook, and like you see in the picture here, um, you've got the co-branding traditional so that the wrap is actually done with the, with the company's name on it. So imagine if you, you're having a charitable event even, right, for your organization. You're saying, we're going to have this event, um, but we want to partner with let's say Menlo Innovations. Um, what can we do for Menlo that, to offer them value in this? Um, well, if you go to them with something like this that says you've got the traditional aspect because you're going to have your signage built into something, as well as a digital aspect because of the reach of what the pictures will do inside, it's a much easier sell. So it, rather than you say, oh, you know, uh, we'll put your logo on this flyer and this and that. I mean, logos on flyers aren't doing anything. So um, it, it, just simple things like that can really go a long way. If you're a first time, if it's a first time buy, or you're thinking about a new event, partnering up with a new event. This is something that we do as the sellers on the back end. So I'm working with a new event, um, and I don't know what my attendance is going to be like. Everything is impression based. People want to know how much are you going to uh, get out of their sponsorship. If I give you 5,000, how many people am I going to reach? So we tell them, OK, if we hit this attendance number, let's say if we sell 8,000 tickets, your charge is going to be $5,000. Um, if we hit 15,000 in attendance, you're going to owe us 10,000. So it's almost a, like a pay-per-click model for the sponsorship industry. But what it does is, if you're the buyer, you can also negotiate that on the back end and say, well, let's say someone approaches you and say, well, we want $2,500 for this event. We need you to sponsor it. You say, hey, I'll give you 500 up front. Here are my three goals. If you accomplish these three goals, you'll get the 2,000 on the back end. It holds some accountability, and it puts the emphasis on the activation, not the sales of the sponsorship. Um, evaluating the media is difficult these days, but it's super important because, like I said, there's always the media buy attached to it, and you want to make sure you're getting what you, you put into it. Um, use traditional to drive digital. We talked about it with eSurance. We talked about it with SnapFuse and their photo booth um, and the co-branding. Um, it's super important as this transition happens that you have to use traditional really. You have to use traditional really to tie into uh, the digital. But like I said, it, it, it coming up here, I think we're going to move out of that and go strictly digital. Um, I love this image because you're seeing an increased uh, use of second screens. Um, and, and, and this to me I love is because it's the tie-in of gamification on the second screen. Um, we're all watching the Olympics. Kind of. You know, we're watching it, but I'm sure some of us are on Twitter, some of us are on Instagram, some of us are on, you know, whatever it is, on our iPad, doing multiple things. And sometimes even when you're watching a game, you're actually looking at stats and different things online. But this point is, is that we're all using second screen a lot more when we're viewing entertainment in general, um, but specifically sports. So to have, I think you'll see in March Madness this year, quite a bit of those second screen ties uh, come into play. Um, Google Now is one of my favorite apps that's on the market right now. It's, it's using some early um, forms of predictive data, uh, predict, predictive data technology, and I think that that's what you're going to see the future of, of sponsorship, sports, and marketing come into play. So um, Golden State Warriors and Sporting Kansas are the two teams that I think are the most cutting edge from the professional aspect. Both are owned or have co-owners that are techies. And, um, at both places, there, there's rumors and talks, and actually across the nation, about uh, things like checking in, um, but not just checking in on Foursquare and saying, I'm here. So when it if you're going to check in automatically when you walk through the doors, because it's going to be GPS location based. It's going to track your purchase history when you're inside the venue. It's going to know that you bought, Mr. Saeed went up to the stand and bought uh, nachos and two Cokes. So the next game you're at, it's going to tell you, Mr. Saeed, would you like those nachos and two Cokes delivered to your chair this time? 
So the predictive data that's gonna it's gonna capture and use, it's gonna use that to make your fame experience much better. But what we're gonna see is an ability to drive sponsorship through that in, in a competitive marketplace. So before it used to be go sign up for a, a, a credit card and you get the free t-shirt. Now it's gonna be you walk into a venue, your phone goes off and it says, visit section 204 and uh, sign up for this or do this and you'll get free nachos because you like nachos. So I think where we're gonna see sponsorship <laughs> shift is, is from this traditional digital mix to 100% digital and then we'll see the predictive data come into play big time. Um, that's all I got really for you today. I mean, I know I bounced a little bit all over the place, uh, but really I just wanted to drive home the, the key idea that um, whether you're a seller or a buyer of sponsorships, it's super important uh, to understand that you have to have that mix right now, but as you, as you move forward, focus on digital activations. Uh, Twitter handle, all my contact info's up here. I wanna open up the floor to see if you guys have any questions uh, and, and see if we can chat a little bit. Um, it can be about sponsorship, it can be about sports marketing, um, and I just wanted to open up the floor and see if you guys had anything for us. All right, all right. first of all, let's give Bilal a, hand, a round of applause. I think that was a lot of great information. I'm sure there's probably gonna be a few questions here, so I'll, I'll try to walk to you and, and pass the mic around. Hello. Hello. So I have a question for you. I, I go to the majority of the Michigan football games, and my cell phone doesn't work at large sporting events or large concerts because of the amount of phones in one space. It just, I have to shut it off. Do you see stadiums and things moving in the direction of making it more accessible to have online capabilities on their cell phones? Because the marketing, it's, it seems like it's hard to do. When, when I, awesome question. When I talk about sports and, and entertainment being behind, the infrastructure is the biggest thing they're behind it. It's not only because of the number of people that are in that place, it's because there's no grid to support it there. Um, it, it's literally like when you go to the convocation center um, down the road in Ypsilanti, uh, there's very few phones that can get service in that building. Um, and I know the same thing happened with the uh, University of Michigan when they implemented their student rewards program. So I think a lot of the investment, when you, when you saw a couple of years ago investments are being made um, in sports, uh, in terms of venues, of facilities, and big investment, capital projects, what you're gonna see now is the infrastructure being put in place. So without that infrastructure, you can't have technology, and they're already behind. This is the number one priority. In, in terms of, in my opinion, that sports and entertainment venues in general have to get caught up. I mean, when you're talking about, especially with music, um, and you think about the aspect of uh, album sales are you know uh, much lower than they once were, and live music is really what's the biggest revenue generator, well, you have to make that experience just the best experience in the world. And if you can't have a live Twitter feed behind the DJ who's spinning uh, to show what fans are saying, that's a fail. It's a fail. And that's a sponsorship opportunity too. So absolutely, within the next two to three years, you're going to see all of the major programs, especially in collegiate, partner up most likely with AT&T um, to, to, to solve that issue. Great. Any other questions? Also, um, first question. I got a little sponsored, sponsored by Main Street Ventures, $25 gift card. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, honestly, what's a sponsorship talk if I don't have a sponsor? <laughs> you want to go get a beer? <laughs> My question is for uh, somebody who maybe doesn't have a lot to offer a sponsor, how can you still make it worth them considering? Uh, let's say you're, you know, you're a smaller company or, you know, even a solopreneur, somebody who's trying to get somebody on board, but maybe you don't know what you can offer a large sponsor. Sure, I, and I think that that it's always important to stay within your boundaries. I think if you overpromise and underdeliver, it, it, it's not gonna do anything good for you because not only are you not gonna be able to partner with them again in the future, they're gonna tell everybody about you know the, the horrible sponsorship they have with you. So I think stay within your boundaries. It, it, that's really important. Um, but you can build in added value all over the place. So like small things like what we tell people is that you have to check into you know Facebook's rules about this and all that. Um, and, and you can ask people who are a little bit well-versed or than I am in the crowd, but you can do logos on a, on, on a, 
a timeline cover or a Facebook event invite rather than a print flyer. So you, you can do things that try and drive the back end. There's things that are free. So if you have X amount of invites to a, a music festival, let's say, um, what you can do is you can post or share a message ahead of time and say, download the app to the music festival. And on the app, you can have sponsor tie-ins there. That's pretty cost-effective method. That's something we're actually working to build in with NumberFest right now, is uh, this app generator, this app, which is just, it's gonna be really simple. It's gonna have a, a map of the festival, it's gonna have a, a layout, or sorry, the, the schedule of events, and it's gonna have some other information in terms of getting rides home and things like that that, that, that fans will need. But it's gonna be uh, sponsored you know, really subtly and really strategically. So the background of the app is going to be a floor plan of an apartment complex because this is a college music festival. So it, it's tough, you know, finding value is tough, but I think it starts with asking the right questions to the client, saying, what are you looking for, and then working to try and deliver that. So good question, another $25 gift card. So uh, just a little plug for Main Street. Uh, they've got a new restaurant, Piata, opening in uh, early May. So. Um, these, these gift cards are good at any of the Main Street restaurants, Palio, Real Seafood, Chop House, Grazi, and uh, Piata in early May. So. I thought I heard you say in your presentation that this need did still need to be partnered with print media. How? I mean, can't you just go digital or... If you do need this partnership, in what way? I, th I don't think specifically print, so if I said that, I apologize. I think that there are ways you can utilize print. I think what you need to do is utilize traditional platforms right now. So if you're going to use print, if that's the route you want to go, um, you would have to say, where, where, what's the aspect or what's the appropriate method to use print? So again, going back to my space, sports and entertainment, the print opportunities are usually in the game programs. So if you can do something creative in the game program with a print ad that says tweet this with this hashtag, and then you can generate new content with that hashtag, whether it's tweet, Instagram, or Facebook, then you can use an aggregate tool for the hashtag, like um, there's pl plenty of aggregate tools to drive all that, and then on the back end have that actual page where, with your content, and you can get your messaging out. So the big thing about sponsorship, people say, is you can't control the messaging, you can advertise and you can control the messaging more. In sponsorship, you're more like branding. I, I disagree completely. I think you use the opportunity for sponsorship to generate traffic or, or for in this case, if you got people to tweet and, and you have an aggregate website where it's showing all the pictures coming in for that hashtag, you can hit them with your info there and get your messaging out that way. So it's my last one, guys, so no more questions. <laughs> I got panda stickers for days. Our, our, our logo's a uh, uh, panda, obviously, so if you got more questions, I'd be willing to answer them, obviously. Well, I, I have a question, real quick, sure. while we wait for the next question, but uh, maybe your opinion on this, because you might not know, but like on the insurance commercial, so they get two billion you know, impressions, and they collect, collect all this data. What is the insurance going to do with that data? Because necessarily, two billion people are not looking for insurance, they're looking for an opportunity to win money. Sure. So how do they disseminate that data to become valuable. Well, there, so again, taking a step back, you always have to ask yourself, what are your goals? What are what are your needs? What are your wants, right? And I think Eastern's goals up front were one: let's let's get some branding and exposure out of this. Let's 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 use the Super Bowl as our way to kick off 2014 and get us those impressions and numbers. But at the end of the day, it's a product that every single one of us in this room has, right? We all have insurance to some extent. And, and that's why I think that the data, in, in terms of a mass exposure media buy like that, has some value to it because um, you're capturing people that everybody needs insurance. But are two billion people like, oh, I didn't win, but I'm gonna switch to insurance? Absolutely not. But what you can do is you can tap into that data and say, um, you do something on the back end. So, hey, we know all our insurance 30 fans didn't win 1.5 million, but go to this website and find out how you can save um, 1050 or something with one and a five in it off your first quote or win a dollar fifty or something, you know? So generating in time, keeping the sponsorship going, right? That's what we talk about is like with music festivals often you got a day, two days, three days, and with the athletic season, I've got I've got eight, nine months. 
But I'm selling the same types of sponsorships with both because I'm using the digital platform to make it last much longer than what it is. So it, it, it's a strategy perspective, right? I think that because eSurance activated, this was an internal promotion rather than like we're going to work with the NFL to, to do a sponsorship. Um, I think they knew their goals very clearly up front, and I think they surpassed all of them. Excellent. Any more questions? All right, well, let's, let's give Bilal one more round of applause. Personally, I thought that was phenomenal information, and I think you know we all, at some point in our jobs and in our lives, we have to think about sponsorship, whether we're being, you know, brought to the product or we're having the product brought to us. It's, we're a part of that, so so excellent presentation. So thank you for being here. Now, the, the part of LA2M, which is probably one of the unique things and one of the cool things, is we spend the next uh, we've got about 19 minutes, and we always get through this. But what we do is we pass the microphone around and give everybody an opportunity to stand up, introduce themselves, uh, give you a quick elevator pitch if you'd like to, if you have a, have a need or a want. Uh, we do ask because uh, we do have a large crowd here today that you keep it very quick, uh, less than 30 seconds. Um, and uh, introduce yourself. You don't have to. If you'd like to, just pass the mic along if you don't want to speak. But if you do, please stand up so that uh, everybody can see you and hear you. So we'll start right up here and pass the mic all the way around the room. Hi, Derek Hill, the Thank you. Donna Layton Lindstrom. Sure, specialty straps for patient groups. Hello, my name is Ian. I'm currently a sophomore at U of M. I am an intern at Eugenics Digital Marketing. Hi, I'm Emily Prague, and I'm a senior at Michigan State studying advertising management, public relations, and sales. And I'm doing a live tweeting today. It's hashtag LA2M, so you can go check out some of the tweets. Hi, my name is Kim Overbeck, and I'm from Replay One, and we do video on demand for anything from Little League to Beer Leagues. Thanks. Hassan Hodges from the Hemline Media Group. Hi, I'm Vivi Kwok. I teach uh, sports marketing and sponsorship at the University of Michigan. Hi, everyone. Dean Anthony White, Assistant Director of Sales of Pac Mobile Marketing and Media, and I uh, just want to thank everyone for coming out and supporting me. Chelsea Astro, also with Pac-Mobile. Philip Atkins, also with Pac-Mobile Media Marketing. David Mayer with Videoverse, we make videos for the internet. Modern Hoplin with the AM Magazine, we're an insert in Washington County, the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, AA News, and Washington County Legal News. Mark Jewinsky, I'm with North Star Reach, we're a nonprofit building a camp for kids with serious health challenges and pink meat. We are looking for a lot of help right now, so if you're interested, let me know. Um, we're looking for discounted and pro bono help in the marketing field, like photography and graphic design. Um, and we're also looking for PR help, but we're looking to hire a database manager as well. Hello, Kevin Packard with the University of Office Technologies. We handle uh, network printers, scanners, things of that nature, uh, and digital uh, display equipment and intelligent whiteboards. Thanks a lot, great presentation, everyone. Hi, my name is Samantha, I'm with Farm Bureau Insurance. I specialize in small business, mortgage protection, and um, all your other standard insurances. So if you have any questions, let me know. Hi, my name is Tarun Gahani. I'm a SEO consultant and web designer. Hi, my name is Robert Hughes. I'm a maze artist. I make mazes for children. And I've also invented a puzzle called a crypto maze, which is a combination of a maze and a cryptogram. Hi, I'm Ross Johnson with 3.7 Designs. Uh, we design beautiful, usable, and search engine friendly websites. I also run the local WordPress meetup. Uh, it's free to attend. It's the last Wednesday every month. And this month, we're going to talk about design, picking a beautiful theme, or improving your existing theme. Hi, I'm Stacey from Bell & Bell, your local digital print shop. And we didn't have LA2M like last week because of the snow, but the week before that, I told everybody that I'm on the um, Power of the Purse Committee. It's a great organization where we auction off purses to raise money for women in the Washtenaw County. So get your tickets, it's March 5th. And after the meeting, 
uh, Molly from Mass Shoes comes up to me and says, well, doesn't that mean you need purses? And I said, sure, she donated eight of them. Mm -hmm. LA2M is magical. I love this place. <laughs> Uh, I'm Pete Scorch, Senior Associate Athletic Director at University of Michigan, overseeing communications, broadcasting, multimedia, and creative services. And yes, we meet all the time about how we can get cell signals and Wi Fi. <laughs> we haven't figured it out yet, but we're working on it. Hi, my name is Jordan Beecham. I work with uh, Texture Builders, and we're a first uh, full service building company, so we do everything from handyman work. Uh, up to designing and building entire homes. Hi, my name is Craig Wilson. Um, I graduated from Northern Michigan University. I'm doing a little bit of uh, content strategy for a few people. Uh, and I, my team won Startup Weekend this past weekend, so it's exciting. Yeah. Check out. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. Check out Chris Worthy. Um, Hi, I'm uh, Tom Bobby, I'm the owner of Mobile Exhibit Specialists. I provide mobile Wi-Fi for stadiums. <laughs> Actually, I need the truck. So I did Monday Night Football for GMC, and everything seems to be going mobile, whether it's trade show or Wi-Fi. So I do big production trucks, so maybe I can help you. Good afternoon. My name is Curtis with Handy Manual. We're a local remodeling firm. Uh, spent the last 10 years building it, the last year, five years saving it, and I need some need to re-energize a little. I'm Martin Smith. I am co-owner of Snap Views and Photo Booth Plus, the photo booth company that Bilal talked about. Thanks for that, by the way. <laughs> and uh, we love working with sponsors because we can help them create email lists, create lists of phone numbers, and people have a great time, enjoy themselves, and then also have something that they can share at the end of the event. Hi, my name is Nancy Clay, and I am an Ann Arbor News refugee. So I'm the traditional media that you all ran from. I'm um, currently doing uh, consulting and writing, marketing and communications. Hi, my name is Tom Crawford. I run a mobile app development business called Movable Bytes. Uh, one of the apps that you might be interested in, uh, if you're not looking for custom development, is called Happy Hour Deals. Uh, works all over Southern Michigan, and there are seven happy hours going on right now within walking distance of here. And at five o'clock today, there will be 59 happy hours within walking distance of here. So we have lots of choices uh, available in the iOS and Android. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carol Lusher. I am with Connections Consulting. We're a fundraising when you need it consultant. And um, if the sports community is way behind in digital, the nonprofit community is even further behind. Hi, I'm Dave Menzo. I'm with Move Communications. We move your story forward with impact to radio, TV, and all forms of multimedia. And I'm actually getting ready to release a new album, Color Wheel. So if you guys are bored later and you want to listen to some sweet jams, go to DaveMenzo.com. <laughs> My name is Peters and I am a web developer at Move Communications. Hi, my name is Jerry Greenspan, and I am a former sponsorship marketer in the corporate community, and I'm looking to take my sponsorships into the future digital. Hi, I'm Rhonda Foxworth from Bank of Ann Arbor, and I will just let you know that we have great opportunities for part-time tellers at Bank of Ann Arbor, so if you know people, uh, where Bank of Ann Arbor is one of the best places to work in, around town, so visit our website, um, or you can stop and ask me. Hi, I'm Samantha West. I'm also with Bank of Ann Arbor, and um, I'm also on the board of the Women's Exchange of Washtenaw, or WXW. We have an event actually coming up a week from tomorrow, and um, it's all about your 30-second commercial, so we'll teach you how to get better at doing things like this and uh, talking in front of groups of people and giving your elevator pitches quickly. So if you're interested, you can check it out at wxwbusiness.com. Thanks. Hi, I'm Bob Wagner. I almost passed the mic today because I'm a print traditional media guy. <laughs> um, but I do highly recommend mixing digital with traditional. Hi, I'm Shannon Kolitz, owner of Media Academica, a video and animation production company here in Ann Arbor. We specialize in short, web-ready videos, animations, and motion graphics. Hi, I'm Matthew Altruda, I'm a social media specialist for Bank of Ann Arbor Sonic Lunch, community builder, host of Treetown Sound in Ann Arbor's 1071, 
I also do a lot of stuff with sponsorship and nonprofits like Festivals, Full Moon, Zingerman's Grilling, Taste of Ann Arbor, Tony Street Party, Puck Drops here. I don't know, go to treetownsound.com or just talk to my law after the meeting. <laughs> Hi, my name is Michelle Lee, and uh, I am with IO. We are in, in the industry of frightening people's days and little ways, and we do this by offering different lines of fun products. Uh, if you'd like to check it out, go to harvestingthecrazy.com, because that's what we do. Hi, I'm Tiffany Tehan. I'm a freelance marketing professional helping small businesses like Michelle's, and uh, I specialize in social media. Good afternoon, my name is Elizabeth Sickles and I do marketing for Asani Glass and we do advanced automotive glass. Uh, I'm Amy Ma. I'm Susan Harris, I'm an interested bystander, uh, internet engineering tech writing. Hi, I'm Heath Zampa, associate with the uh, organization called Network 21. And what they do is they help people to convert some of their monthly expenditures into income generating assets. If you want to learn how, there's a free webcast Sunday out the evening at 8 o'clock, and you can watch on your computer. And if you want to be on uh, attend that, just come see me, give me your email, and I'll make sure you get an invitation. Here. Roger. I'm Roger Rail. I do the video here and several other places, including uh, a2 New Tech, which is uh, next Tuesday, and uh, the spinoff, D New Tech, is uh, the first Wednesday of every month. They're actually looking for sponsors to help keep D New Tech. So if anybody is interested in helping sponsor the startup community in Detroit, uh, I know they're looking for some sponsors and speakers too. Also, tonight is Ann Arbor Video Interest Group meeting, uh, our first remote meeting. It'll be at uh, ProCam in Livonia. Uh, you can go to A2VIG, A2VIG.org, and uh, RSVP and sign up. Hello, I'm Leah McKnight. I'm a America Vista at Growing Hope, a nonprofit in Ypsilanti. We do um, urban agriculture, education, healthy food access, security. And we are looking for a social media internship. And we have a host of other internships that we'd like to fill for this spring. Um, it's on our website, growinghope.net. Check it out. Hi, my name is Tanya Andrews. I'm also with Growing Hope. I'm the development and marketing associate. And yes, if you're interested in being an intern with us, please check us out. I'm also excited to mention that we are one of the lucky recipients of the funding from the Ford Lake Frozen Leap that Packwood is doing um, this weekend, the 15th. It's a really nifty event. You should check it out. Thanks. Hi, I'm Mary Lou. I'm with um, LA2M. And um, thanks, everybody, for coming out. This, is, this has been a really great presentation and, and really uh, fascinating information. Thanks, Paul. Wow. Um, and also, speaking of sponsorship, <laughs> in, in case you didn't know, if, if you're a first time we're here, LA2M does have monthly sponsorships. This month it's, it's uh, Ross with a 3.7 design, so thanks to Ross for that. Um, and it's, it's actually um, a, a really good value. Our, our um, email list is, is uh, almost up to um, 1,800. Um, and you have your logo and your slogan and uh, a link to your website in our weekly uh, email um, you get mentioned here at the meeting you are um, you can bring uh, materials to distribute here um, it, it, it's a really good value it's only 250 dollars a month so if that's something that would be of, of interest to you i uh, would really appreciate talking with you i'll be right up here and uh, i'll talk to you later hey i'm Frederick schilling from Arnfred studios i'm a commercial in toronto portrait photographer Photograph these meetings, go to the members' Facebook page, uh, issue everything from portraits to uh, some of the um, town's trucks. So, uh, in fact, says, I'm like, don't do it. Uh, all right, great job, everyone. My name is Jim Musial. Uh, after 15 years in the traditional printing industry, I uh, went into the digital world a couple years ago, and I am a consultant on, uh, on uh, websites and mobile uh, development. So today's talk was really right to the heart for me because that's exactly where we see a lot of the business going today. And although there still is a great use for traditional media, we know that we have to mix it with digital as well. So again, thank you, Bilal, for being here with us today. It's, uh, it was a great presentation. 
Next week, we have a, another phenomenal speaker. It's actually our own Derek Marabon from Ingenix Digital Media, and he's going to be uh, he's going to be speaking about business business marketing and, uh, and a lot of things that are going on there. So you won't want to miss it. So we appreciate everyone being here again today. One more round of applause for the loud speaker. And if you didn't catch it as the microphone was going around today, you can tell that business also gets done here as well. So you meet some great people here. So stick around for a few minutes, introduce yourself to someone, get a business card because you never know where that business is going to come from. Everybody have a great day. We'll see you next week. Thanks.